Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be reading The Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales uh, by John Sheska and Lane Smith. So I hope you guys enjoy. <clears throat> I have found a kernel of wheat, said the little red hen. Now who will help me plant this wheat? Where's that lazy dog? Where's that lazy cow? Where's that lazy mouse? Wait a minute, hold everything. You can tell your story right here. This is the end paper. The book hasn't even started yet. Who are you? Will you help me plant the wheat? I'm Jack. I'm the narrator. And no, I can't help you plant the wheat. I'm a very busy guy trying to put a book together. Now why don't you just disappear for a few pages? I'll call when I need you. But who will help me tell my story? Who will help me draw a picture of the wheat? Who will help me spell the wheat? Listen, hen, forget the wheat. Here comes the title page. Title page for the Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales. So this is very interesting. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, I can't see that. So this is a very interesting start to book. See how the hen, uh, what the hen said was in red. And it's like really big and loud because she's yelling at Jack. Let's see. I know, I know. The page is upside down. I meant to do that. Whoever looks at that dedication stuff, anyhow, if you really want to read it, you can always stand on your head. Introduction. A long time ago, people used to tell magical stories of wonder and enchantment. Those stories were called fairy tales. Those stories are not in this book. The stories in this book are almost fairy tales, but not quite. The stories in this book are fairly stupid tales. I mean, what else would you call a story like Goldilocks and the Three Elephants? This girl walking through the woods smells peanut porridge cooking. She decides to break into the elephant's house, eat the porridge, sit in chairs, and sleep in the beds. But once she gets in the house, she can't climb up on baby elephant's chair because it's too big. She can't climb up on mama elephant's chair because it's much too big. And she can't climb up on papa elephant's chair because it's much, much too big. So she goes home. The end. And if you don't think that's fairly stupid, you should read Little Red Running Shorts or maybe The Stinky Cheese Man. In fact, you should definitely go read the stories now because the rest of this introduction just kind of goes on and on. It doesn't really say anything. I stuck it on the end here so it would fill up the page and make it look like I really knew what I was talking about. So stop now. I mean it. Quit reading. Turn the page. If you read this last sentence, it won't tell you anything. So. Very interesting start to this book. Chicken licking. Once upon a time, Chicken Lickin was standing around when a piece of something fell on her head. She wasn't the brightest thing on two legs, so she started running around in circles, clucking, The sky is falling! The sky is falling! We must tell the president! Chicken Lickin ran to her friend, Ducky Lucky, and clucked, Ducky Lucky! Ducky Lucky! The sky is falling! The sky is falling! We must tell the president! Let's go, quack, Ducky Lucky! Chicken Lickin and Ducky Lucky ran to their friend, Goosey Lucy, and yelled, Goosey Lucy! Goosey Lucy! The sky is falling! The sky is falling! We must tell the president! Let's go, honked Goosey Lucy. Chicken Lickin, Ducky Lucky, and Goosey Lucy ran to their friend Cocky Locky and yelled, Cocky Locky, Cocky Locky, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, we must tell the president. Let's go, crowed Cocky Locky. Oh, sorry, forgot to show you the page. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Just gonna... Sorry about that. Let me move that out of the way. Wait a minute, wait a minute, cried Jack the Newer. I forgot the table of contents, I forgot the table of contents. Hey, you're not in this story, said Chicken Lickin. I know, said Jack the Newer, but I came to warn you the table of contents is the sky's falling, the sky's falling, clicked Chicken Lickin, we must tell the present. So Chicken Lickin, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Cocky Locky ignored Jack the Narrator and ran off to catch a plane to Washington. Just outside the airport, they met Foxy Loxy. Foxy Loxy, Foxy Loxy, the sky's falling, the sky's falling, we must tell the present, yelled Chicken Lickin, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Cocky Locky. Well, come with me, said Foxy Loxy. I know a shortcut to the airport. Foxy Loxy led Chicken Lickin, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, and Cocky Locky to his cave. He didn't get to eat them, though, because Chicken Lickin was almost right. The sky wasn't falling. See, there's Jack right there trying to tell him, hey, wait, wait, guys. It's not the sky that's falling. The table of contents was... It fell and squashed everybody. The end. So, everyone squished there. For them. The princess and the bowling ball. Once upon a time, there was a prince. And this prince's dad and mom, the king and queen, somehow got 
it into their royal heads that no princess would be good enough for their boy unless she could feel pee through 100 mattresses. So it should come as no surprise that the prince had a very hard time finding a princess. Every time he met a nice girl, his mom and dad would pile 100 mattresses on top of a pee and then invite her to sleep over. When the princess came down for breakfast, the queen would ask, How'd you sleep, dear? The princess would politely say, Fine, thank you. And the king would show her the door. Now this went on for three years, and of course nobody ever felt the pee under 100 mattresses. Then one day the prince met the girl of his dreams. He decided he'd better do something about it. That night, before the princess went to bed, the prince slipped his bowling ball under the 100 mattresses. When the princess came down for breakfast the next morning, the queen asked, How'd you sleep, dear? This might sound odd, said the princess, but I think you needed another mattress. I feel like I was sleeping on a lump as big as a bowling ball. The king and queen were satisfied. The prince and princess were married, and everyone lived happily, though maybe not completely honestly, ever after. The end. Big bowling ball. I'm not gonna be comfortable. <clears throat> the really ugly duckling. Once upon a time, there was a mother duck and a father duck who had seven baby ducklings. Six of them were regular looking ducklings. The seventh was a really ugly duckling. Everyone used to say, What a nice looking bunch of ducklings. Well, all except that one. Boy, he's really ugly. That's mean. <laughs> the really ugly duckling heard these people, but he didn't care. He knew that one day he would probably grow up to be a swan and be bigger and look better than anything in the pond. Poor little guy. He's happy, though. Well, as it turned out, he was just a really ugly duckling. And he grew up to be a really ugly duck. The end. Hmm. <laughs> the other frog prince. Once upon a time, there was a frog. One day, when he was sitting on his lily pad, he saw a beautiful princess sitting by the pond. He hopped in the water, swam over to her, and poked his head out of the weeds. Pardon me, O oh beautiful princess, he said in his most sad and pathetic voice. I wonder if you could help me. The princess was about to jump up and run, but she felt sorry for the frog with the sad and pathetic voice. So she asked, What can I do to help you, little frog? Well, said the frog, I'm not really a frog, but a handsome prince who was turned into a frog by a wicked witch's spell. And the spell can only be broken by the kiss of a beautiful princess. The princess thought about this for a second and lifted the frog from the pond and kissed him. I was just kidding, said the frog. He jumped back in the pond and the princess wiped the frog slime off her lips. The end. Gross. Mm. Little Red Running Shorts. Okay, I've got things running smoothly now, said Jack the narrator. And this next story is even better than the last three. See, it's about this girl who runs very fast and always wears red running shorts. That's where her name comes from, get it? So anyway, this girl is running to her granny's house when she meets a wolf. He tricks her into taking the long way while he takes a shortcut. Now, this is the good part because red runs so fast she beats the wolf to granny's house. He knocks on the door, red answers it, and guess what she says? My, what slow feet you have, and that's it, the end. Is that great or what? So sit back, relax, and enjoy, little red running shorts. And now, like I already said, little red running shorts. You just told the whole story, said little red running shorts. You're not going to tell it again? You can't say that, says Jack. You have to start with once upon a time. No way, says the wolf. You blew it. But you guys are next. Look at the title at the top of the page, little red running shorts. That's you. Let's go, Wolf. We're out of here. Wait, you can't do this. Your story is supposed to be three pages long. What do I do when we turn the next page? He is worried. And Jack, see, Jack right here is worried. Because they're leaving. He hasn't done anything. And the next page, we don't know what's going to be there. And they're just like, well, you told our story. We're out of here, man. He blew it. I blew it. I planted the wheat, I watered the wheat, I harvested the wheat. Now do I get to tell my story, said the little red hen? Say what's going on here? Why is that page blank? Is that my page? Where's that lazy dog? Where's that lazy cat? Where's that lazy mouse? How do they expect me to tell the whole story by myself? Where's the lazy, that lazy narrator? Where's that lazy illustrator? Where's that lazy author? So like, they, like Jack said, he didn't have anything for this page, so it's just blank. The little red hen's not happy with him. Jack's bean problem. 
Forget that hen, now it's time for the best story in the whole book, my story, because once upon a time, I traded our last cow for three magic beans and, hey giant, what are you doing down here? You wrecking my whole story. I don't like that story, said the giant. You always trick me. That's the best part, said Jack. Fee fi fo furry. I have made my own story. Great rhyme, giant, and I'm sure your story is just as good, but there's no room for it, so why don't you just climb back up the bee stock? I'll be up in a few minutes to steal your gold and your singing harp. I'll grind your bones to make my bread. I knew you'd understand. There's another little thing that's been bugging me. Could you please stop talking in uppercase letters? It really messes up the page. I will read my story now, said the giant, and he did. Giant story. The end of the evil stepmother, and I'll huff and snuff and give you three wishes. The beast changes into seven dwarves happily ever after, for a spell had been cast by a wicked witch once upon a time. That's your story? said Jack. You gotta be kidding me. That's not a fairly stupid tale. That's an incredibly stupid tale. That's an unbelievably stupid tale. That is the most stupid tale I've ever... <clears throat> the giant grabbed Jack and dragged him to the next page. See, there's, there's a giant story that he made all by himself. There's a little artwork right here. He's very proud of his story. Once upon a time, there was a giant. The giant squeezed Jack and said, Tell me a better story. I'll grind your bones to make my bread. And when your story's finished, I'll grind your bones to make my bread anyway. Ho, ho, ho. The giant laughed an ugly laugh. Jack thought, he'll kill me if I do. Kill me if I don't. There's no one, only one way to get out of this. Jack cleared his throat and then began his story. Once upon a time, there was a giant. The giant squeezed Jack and said, Tell me a better story. I'll grind your bones to make my bread. And when your story is finished, I will grind your bones to make my bread anyway. Ho, ho, ho. The giant laughed an ugly laugh, Jack thought. He'll kill me if I do. He'll kill me if I don't. There's only one way to get out of this, Jack. Jack cleared his throat and then began his story. Once upon a time, there was a giant. The giant squeezed Jack and said, Tell me a better story. I'll grind your bones to make my bread. And when your story is finished, I'll grind your bones to make my bread anyhow. Ho, ho, ho. The giant laughed an ugly laugh, Jack thought. Kill me if I do. He'll kill me if I don't. There's only one way to get out of this. Jack cleared his throat and then begun his story. And as you can see, the text gains smaller and it's repeating because Jack's trying to stall so the giant doesn't eat him smart smart thinking by jack cinder rumple stiltskin or the girl who really blew it once upon a time there was a beautiful girl named cinderella who lives with her wicked stepmother and two ugly stepsisters their step relatives were not only wicked and ugly they also made cinderella clean the house every day one day the local prince announced he was holding a fabulous ball at his castle Everyone was invited. The stepmother and stepsisters got all dressed up well, but as usual, they made Cinderella clean the house. So she didn't have time to get ready. After the stepmother and stepsisters left for the ball, Cinderella sat down and began to cry. Just then, a little man appeared. Please don't cry, he said. I can help you spin straw into gold. I don't think that will do me much good, said Cinderella. I need a fancy dress, glass slippers, and a coach. Would you like to try to guess my name, said the clever little man. Cinderella looked at him. No, not really. Come on, do you think it's Chester? If you don't have a dress, it doesn't really matter. Oh, just a, guess a name, any name. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, said Cinderella. Then she closed the door and left the little man standing outside screaming, Rumble Stiltskin, Rumble Stiltskin, Rumble Stiltskin! When the stepmother and stepsisters got home from the ball, Cinderella told them about the strange little man. They still made her clean the house. And meaner still, they changed her name to Cinder Rumple Stiltskin. The end. They are. You see the giant still on this screen, and Jack's right there telling the story. It looks like he's getting tired. I wonder what's going to happen. The tortoise and the hare. Once upon a time, there was a tortoise who was very slow, but very dependable. He would always get where he set out to go. It just took him longer than most people. One day, Rabbit saw a tortoise walking slowly, but surely down the road and said, Tortoise, you are so slow. I could probably grow hair faster than you run. Oh, yeah, said Tortoise slowly. Yeah, said Rabbit. So they decided to race. On the day of the big race, Tortoise and the Rabbit lined up at the starting line. Alice said, on your mark, 
Get set. Grow. Tor started to run. Rabbit started to grow his hair. There's the, there's the hair right there. Rabbit's going to try to grow to beat Tortoise. Tortoise ran. Rabbit grew hair. 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 Rabbit, sorry. Rabbit grew hair, his hair. Tortoise ran. Rabbit grew his hair. Tortoise ran. Rabbit grew his hair. Tortoise is still running. Rabbit is still growing his hair. Not the end. Out of hair. The Stinky Cheese Man. Once upon a time, there was a little old woman and a little old man who lived together in a little old house. They were lonely, so the little old lady decided to make a man out of stinky cheese. She gave him a piece of bacon for her mouth and two olives for his eyes and put him in the oven to cook. When she opened her oven to see if she he was done, the smell knocked her back. Woo! What is that terrible smell, she cried. The stinky cheese man hopped out of the oven and ran out the door calling, run, run as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the stinky cheese man. The old, little old lady and the little old man sniffed the air. I'm not really very hungry, said the little old man. I'm not really all that lonely, said the little old lady. So they didn't chase the stinky cheese man. The stinky cheese man ran and ran until he met a cat eating grass in a field. Wow, what's that awful smell, said the cow. The stinky cheese man said, I've run away from a little old lady and a little old man. I can run away from you too, I can. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the stinky cheese man. The cow gave another sniff and said, I'll bet you could give someone two or three stomach aches. I think I'll just eat weeds. So the cow didn't chase the stinky cheese man either. The stinky cheese man ran and ran until he met some kids playing outside school. Gross, said a little girl. What's that nasty smell? I've run away from a little old lady and a little old man and a cow, and I can run away from you too, I can. Run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the stinky cheese man. The little boy looked up, sniffed the air, and said, If we catch him, our teacher will probably make us eat him. Let's get out of here. So the kids didn't chase the stinky cheese man either. By and by, the stinky cheese man, man came to a river with no bridge. How will I ever cross this river? It's too big to jump, and if I try to swim across, I'll probably fall apart, said you-know-who. Just then, a sly fox, who shows up in a lot of stories like these, poked his head out of the bushes. Why, just hop on my back, and I'll carry you across, stinky cheese man. How do I know you won't eat me? Trust me, said the fox. So the stinky cheese man hopped on the fox's back. The fox swam to the middle of the river and said, Oh, man, what's that funky smell? Smelly cheese, man. The fox coughed, gagged, and sneezed, and the stinky cheese man flew off his back and into the river, where he fell apart. The end. I found the wheat, I planted the wheat, I grew the wheat, I harvested the wheat, I ground the wheat, I made the dough, I baked the bread, said the little red hen. And did anyone help me? Did anyone save space for my story? So now, said the little red hen, who think they're going to help me eat the bread? Bread, said the giant. Eat, said the giant. Oh no, it's gonna happen. He really likes that bread. The end. See, he ate that whole thing. Man. Whew. 
So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the book. It's, it's going to be a long video. I didn't know it would take this long to read it, but uh, it's just such a good book. I really enjoy this book. I remember when I was younger, I, I loved reading this book. So I hope everyone who's watching this video enjoyed this book too. And uh, hope everyone's doing well. See ya.